let, let's face it, over time, things change. I mean, it's amazing to think that public schools actually had smoking lessons at one time. People used to use mercury to handcraft velvet, and that's how the term mad as a hatter came about, because it made you mad. And dangerous chemicals were widespread. I mean, I used many in my previous job in the 1970s and 1980s. A lot of things have got better over time, and carpet cleaning is certainly no exception. So here are three old myths that just still seem to be hanging around like a bad smell. Myth number one is that all carpet cleaning is the same. And of course, that's just absolutely not true. Wow. Carpet cleaning products vary enormously, as does the equipment. But the knowledge and skills of the person doing the job also makes a, a, a huge difference. Now just imagine an old, out-of-date carpet cleaning machine from the 1960s and now compare it with the latest low moisture, highly effective machines now available. You'd have to be completely brain dead to think that the results would be exactly the same from both machines. And yet many carpet cleaners are using exactly the same machines that came out in the 60s. The design and function hasn't changed. Oh my God. The technology has changed so little that you'd never even know the difference. And yet there are new machines that apply just the right amount of cleaning product. They gently massage it into the carpet fibers and remove the soiling. The difference can be wow. But equipment is only part of the process. The cleaning products also vary such a lot. There are cheap carpet cleaning detergents available that cost a few tens of pence per room. Some carpet cleaners even use laundry detergent and this will ruin your carpet over the next few months. There are also products that cost many, many pounds per room. It can cost as much as 50 pounds in products if it's a complex job. So why would anybody buy a carpet cleaning product that costs so much when a cheap, excuse the pun, chemical is available? Well, it comes down to results, drying and ethics, really. I mean, the top of the range products are eye-wateringly expensive, but they do an amazing job. They give your carpet some stain and soil repellency and they dry, dry faster. Any carpet cleaner with decent moral standards would want to use a product like that and keep clear of the cheap harmful chemicals. So really, which would you rather have used on your expensive carpets? Would you rather save a few pounds and get a poor result that will ruin your carpets? Or pay more for a fantastic job that will keep your carpets looking better for longer? Well, that's the choice that's being made every day. The final piece of the puzzle is the who. That is, who is doing the cleaning? Many carpet cleaners don't know wool from olefin and a Brussels Wilton from a needle punch. It makes a difference because if you soak a Brussels Wilton, it will start to shrink before your eyes. Even carpet cleaners who mean well and try hard still need to know what they're doing. And that's why I decline around one in every three customers who contact us for cleaning. If they insist on only the cheapest, lowest standards, or they just don't care what equipment or products are used. Or if they just think that all carpet cleaners are the same, then we're not the right people for the job. So what's myth number two? The harsher the soap or detergent, the better. Well, it's untrue. In fact, harsh soap isn't necessary to get out the nastiest stains from your carpets. Soaps and other detergents can leave a sticky residue too. 
the opposite of the effect you want to have for your carpet. It's not just your carpet that doesn't like harsh soaps either. People with allergies and sensitivities may just prefer not to bring chemicals, soaps and detergents into their environment. So what does work? Well, the right product for the job. Wool needs a gentle, neutral pH cleaning solution applied without high heat or pressure. It needs to be applied in lower amounts to get the best result and to avoid damaging the delicate wool. Synthetics can require a higher pH product or even an oil busting product to do a great job. And that's because most synthetic harbor, uh, fibers are made from oil derivatives. So they bond easily with oily soils and just don't give them up so easily. Many stains require a specific treatment to be successful. So it's not about how strong the products are, but whether they're the right one for the, the, that particular situation. Myth number three, soak the carpet for a better clean. Well, that's false and it's very risky. Nothing could be further from the truth. Soaking carpets with more and more water does not equal a better carpet cleaning job. Fact, bacteria and mould need water to grow and thrive in your carpet. So you're actually doing those unwanted guests a favour by using more water. In fact, pretty much every problem in carpet cleaning happens because carpets are left too wet. Soaking the carpets can cause some carpets to shrink. Other types of carpet can delaminate and this is where the layers of a carpet separate and it causes looseness and rippling. As we've seen already, bacteria and mould can grow under the carpet, causing a serious health hazard. And carpets left drenched can often dry out looking dreadful and smelling unbearable. So what's the solution? Well, it's to find experts who know how to get rid of stains and clean your carpet using proven and effective processes. The right carpet cleaning professional will know not to soak your carpet. So what's the truth to great carpet cleaning? Well, <clears throat> It's actually really, really simple. The right equipment, the best products, and plenty of know-how makes a beautiful result. Choosing the best technology, natural cleaning agents, and expert carpet cleaning professionals can save you a lot of time and money and frustration down the road. Make a choice between avoiding these three myths will help you get the best carpet cleaning possible. I hope this short video has helped.